I thought we should start off um, with you providing us an overview of this position the university finds itself in with regard to the operating budget. Well, thanks, Colleen. Uh, you may recall that at the town hall back in May, we projected that, the, that there would be a gap between the growth in the university's costs and the growth in the university's revenues that would reach $44.5 million by the end of the planning cycle in four years' time. Um, so we have been, uh, uh, as we look at that gap, as we consider what to do about our budget, I think there are a couple of, uh, of fundamentals that I keep in mind. The first is uh, that our purpose as a university remains what it has always been. We're here for teaching and for research to serve the public in Saskatchewan and beyond. Um, so we will continue to do that. But there will be many things that will change. And I think our university will be a different place because of the choices that we make in the coming years. Can you give us um, an idea of what those changes might look like? Is it early enough to predict what they might look like? Well, it's too soon to tell because there's a lot of conversation still to have at our, uh, at our university. Uh, but we have received many suggestions from members of the campus community. Um, uh, so, you, you, again, you may recall at the time of the town hall, we were asking people to send ideas for what sorts of changes they foresaw in the university. And there were a whole lot of ideas that came in. So it's big things and small things. We'll be looking at all of them. And it's really a case of a sort of uh, no stone unturned approach to looking at, uh, at uh, what we can do in the university. It was uh, uh, striking to me that nearly 30% um, of the suggestions that came in um, had to do with changes to the university's workforce. So that certainly is one thing that we will look at. What does the fact that 30% of those suggestions related to the workforce say to you? Well, I think what it, uh, what it says to me is that people understand the basic structure of our budget. So as a university, uh, something like 70% of our, uh, of our operating budget expenditures um, relate to our staff, to people, so to compensation for staff. Um, so we know that that's a significant expense and one we have to be mindful of. So you've got suggestions from uh, people across campus, and I assume that there's a lot of thinking going on at the senior level of the organization. How do you bring all that together uh, to make decisions? What we want to make sure is that we take a comprehensive approach uh, to looking at the changes we make as a university. We want to look at administrative expenses. We know that there may as well need to be changes to academic things that we do. So what we have done is we've set up uh, four different uh, quadrant work teams. Uh, so looking at academic and administrative matters, looking at centralized and decentralized ways of taking action across the university. And those groups are, uh, are hard at work. They're looking at, uh, at different ideas for each of those quadrants. Um, and I think people across the campus will hear more about, uh, about their ideas as they, as they progress in their work. Can you give an example of the difference between a, a central administrative action and a distributed administrative action in terms of the change? We, uh, we know that there are some things in the university that are most effectively done at a central level, at a university-wide level, and there are other things uh, that need to really be done at the local level. So this is uh, the way we've organized our work in the, in the budget adjustment project really reflects that reality. Um, so I think, um, uh, for example, the work that's being done on how we process travel claims is an example of something that can only be done at a university-wide level. So it's not that we'll ask each unit to come up with their own way of processing travel claims. Uh, that's an efficiency that we need to tackle by a centralized initiative. But on the other hand, there will be other uh, administrative savings uh, and efficiencies that can be uh, captured, can be, uh, can be identified. Um, in offices spread right across the campus and those are those are then the distributed ones where the local people on the spot are the ones who can think of a different way of doing things. So there are various working groups that are taking a look at university operations. How are all of those uh, results going to be brought together in order to make decisions about changes that will happen across the institution? Well, we have uh, a steering committee for the project uh, whose job it is to look at all the ideas that come from all of the quadrant working groups um, and really to um, uh, synthesize them and identify the, the ideas on which action is recommended. Um, that group uh, has met numerous times uh, already uh, over the spring and summer and early fall. Um, and it has identified um, uh, really a set of principles that we believe are important to the whole, uh, the whole process. 
Um, so we have a list of 10 principles that will guide the steering committee's work and the budget adjustment process as a whole. Um, I believe those are posted on our website, but they include a number of ideas that are really, um, to me, very important to the conduct of the work. Um, so one of the principles is um, comprehensiveness, uh, that we really want to look at all the possibilities in the university so that we can make the best choices about the, the budget adjustments um, that will keep our budget in balance but will also help us to fulfill our mission. So we need to look at many ideas and many possibilities. Um, another uh, principle is sustainability, and that's one that our board has made very clear is, uh, is critical. We're not looking to solve a short-term problem. We're looking to end up in a position where the university's budget is sustainably in balance for the long term. Um, and I think a third um, of the, the ten principles, one that I think is quite, uh, quite important to, uh, um, for us to, uh, to incorporate in all our work, is a principle of transparency. So we want to communicate a lot about the process, about the way it works, about the criteria that will use, be used for decisions, um, about the decisions that have been made at the appropriate times. Um, there will be many things that our groups will be working on in the idea stage that we won't be able to, to talk about. Um, but uh, transparency to me really means frequent, regular communication uh, to convey the sense of the process and of what's happening to the campus uh, on an ongoing basis, and we're committed to doing that. Um, so I think those principles will be very important. Um, the steering committee, based on the ideas that come forward from the working groups, on the principles that it's, uh, it has adopted, uh, will make recommendations to the Provost Committee on Integrated Planning. Um, uh, some of the ideas will have to be approved there. There may be ideas that go to our Board of Governors for approval. Um, so really the, the purpose of the steering committee and the working groups is to generate the ideas and the recommendations to feed into our campus's normal decision-making structures. Can you talk a little bit about timelines in this process? We know um, that we need to bring our budget into balance over a four-year period. Um, so the, the, my goal in this project is not for us to do the quickest possible adjustments to our budget because those may not be the wisest ones. It's really to be deliberate, to make the, to with appropriate reflection, with evidence, with analysis, to make the decisions that are the best ones to make um, within a four-year time frame. There may be some changes that we initiate that will actually take longer than four years to complete, so it's very important that we allow for that. Um, in order to have that deliberate uh, process and that extended time frame to make the right changes in the university, it is important that some of the things that we do proceed early uh, because we do have uh, a budget deficit to address in the current year already um, and we will have to have some measures that happen uh, uh, early in the planning cycle while we take our time to deliberate about some of the other um, uh, longer term changes that, uh, that may be required. Thank you very much for your time today. Thank you, Colleen.